But there's no other way to start today's show than with the AFC Championship game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Kansas City Chiefs, who are moving on to their third Super Bowl in five years. Of course, Patrick Mahomes has been the quarterback in all five of those years. And in all five of those years, they have at least gotten to the AFC Championship game in which they've hosted every single year at iconic Arrowhead Stadium, which has never been done before in the history of the NFL. So Kansas City won 23 to 20. And, um, you know, when we talk about great athletes, it doesn't matter what sport we're talking about. It doesn't even have to be a team sport. It could be individual sports, you know, tennis, golf, swimming, whatever the case may be. When we talk about the greatest athletes ever, we're talking about Phelps, Serena, Federer, Tiger. We think about the great individual moments. And even in team sports, Michael Jordan, flu game. LeBron James coming back from down 3-1 against the 73-9 and Golden State Warriors team to break my heart. We think about Tom Brady winning ring number five, breaking the tie with Montana for the most Super Bowl rings among starting quarterbacks with a 28-3 comeback at age 39 years old. All of these different things we think about with the greatest athletes. That, my friends, what we saw last night out of that Kansas City quarterback who wears number 15, was one of the greatest performances in the history of the National Football League. Patrick Mahomes, on not just a bum foot, or ankle rather, which he injured last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Need I you know, mention that Tracy Wilson reported just minutes before kickoff that that is an injury that normally takes at least three to six weeks to recover from. Mahomes was playing on an AFC Championship game eight days later against one of the best defenses in the NFL. Certainly the best fourth quarter defense in the NFL, and we all know that's when it all matters most. He did this without his number one receiver, Mikko Hardman. He did this with a receiver, in uh, a guy in Noah Gray. Okay, how about this? How about this guy, Noah Gray? Who has more tackles than catches? In the NFL. This is who he's throwing to. He has no run game whatsoever. Kansas City runs the ball 17 times. They get a grand total of 42 yards. I'm sorry, they ran the ball 20 times for 42 yards. He is in position against a team that is better than him. Or the better, a team that's better than what he's got against a quarterback that was previously 3-0 against him, and the whole narrative coming in this game was, hey, don't look now. Is Joe Burrow better than Patrick Mahomes? A narrative that I laughed off last week, thought it was preposterous, thought a guy who already has a Super Bowl ring in two appearances, now going on three, by the way, who has one MVP that's about to be two. We're gonna, It's going to be official next Thursday night at the NFL Honors. Two MVPs, now three Super Bowl appearances with a Super Bowl ring, and arguably the greatest five-year stretch to begin a career in the history of the league. Joe Burrow is still clearly the second-best quarterback in the NFL. There's not a quarterback on planet Earth, not named Patrick Mahomes the second, that I would not take over, that I or that, that I would take over Joe Burrow. None. He's a remarkable talent. Dude is maybe the most accurate guy in the league. Moves well in the pocket, is calm, poised, cool, collected. But when the Bengals needed him most, and this has been rare in his brief career thus far in the NFL, and even when you go back to college at LSU, this has been rare of Joe Burrow, that when his best was needed, or when his best was required, he did not give his best. Joe Burrow yesterday, against a lesser defense, 270 yards, okay, not bad. A touchdown, but two costly interceptions. A QBR of 50, which QBR is 0 to 100, so right in the middle, like the definition of average, and a passer rating that was ugh, below average at 70. Patrick Mahomes, on the other hand, throwing two guys who used to play defense on a bum leg against a top five defense, completed nearly 70% of his passes. 326 yards, two touchdowns, a QBR of 67, a passer rating of 105. 
with no running game, with no legitimate receiver outside of Travis Kelsey to speak of, that, ladies and gentlemen, was greatness on display. I'm no Chiefs fan, although I, I'm wearing this red Under Armour shirt, so it, it might appear to be the case. I'm a free agent fan. I'll be picking my team in a, you know, a month's time, but we'll see what happens with that. But I cannot help but appreciate what I just witnessed last night, what all of America just witnessed last night on national television at Arrowhead Stadium, not Burrowhead. And that sort of shifts me to my next point. I said on Friday's show when I predicted this game and I went with the Kansas City Chiefs, I said part of it is not necessarily that Kansas City's better because I still don't think they're better. They have three superstars at their position, obviously Mahomes. Then you have Travis Kelsey. And then you have Chris Jones, who I said on Friday had to have a big game and he absolutely dominated last night. Had the probably the defensive play of the game late in the fourth quarter, sacking Joe Burrow on that third down. He was outstanding. But I said there's a real Warriors-Grizzlies aspect to this. Now, for the record, Cincinnati has accomplished far more than Memphis has. And Kansas City hasn't accomplished as much as Golden State has. But there was a dynamic of team has a championship in its, in its rearview rear mirror in the last few years. Kansas City did win three years ago against the 49ers in the Super Bowl. They have the best quarterback in the league, very well might be the best player in the league, although I think it's a battle between he and Aaron Donald. I still think Dar Donald is a monster. But be that as it may, you've got the championship pedigree. You've got the great coach. You've got your key guys, your, your core guys locked into your team, ready to go each and every Sunday. Facing a team in Cincinnati that, yes, while it, its resume can stack up against just about everybody if we're talking about the last two years, uh... I don't, I don't see the rings. I, I, I don't know. Is it just me or is, is Joe Burrow fl flashing a ring that doesn't have LSU on it? I, just, I'm, just, I'm just asking a question. Just, just asking for a friend. And when you had all week long, it started in Buffalo. When the Bengals beat the Bills last week, crushed Buffalo. Looked amazing. It was the win of the most impressive win of the weekend in the divisional round. But you've got... A player for Cincinnati, I, don't, I forgot it was Mike Hilton, somebody uh, uh, for, for the Bengals saying, we're going to Burrowhead rather than Arrowhead. Ooh, well, that's that's bold support material. You've got Eli Apple doing his Eli Apple thing. He's the Patrick Beverly of the NFL, talking trash when God knows nobody in the NFL, everybody in the NFL is better backing up their trash talk than Eli Apple. Okay, dude is not a good corner. He gets burned every Sunday. You have Joe Burrow walking into the stadium with a t-shirt that says, apologize in advance. You have Joe Mixon, who, by the way, was like no factor yesterday. He had eight carries for 19 yards and got benched, by the way. Joe Mixon, who's talking about, we're the big dogs of the AFC. And Kansas City does not say a word. I said, oh, okay. Okay. You want us? You know, you're going to get us. They had five sacks. It took the ball away twice. Mahomes, as I mentioned, was otherworldly. And Andy Reid out coach Zach Taylor. And I, if I have to hear another Bengals fan talk about, it's the ref's fault. Was it? I mean, I, I, I thought if you were the big dogs of the AFC, you wouldn't need assistance from, from the Zebras. But, uh, I mean, listen, what, what do I know? What do I know? Most of those calls were go either way. There was not one call where I was like, oh my God, that's obvious. Well, Bryson, what about when they were holding on the offensive line when Hendrickson, Hendrickson uh, got held and the interior defensive lineman got held when Patrick Mahomes broke off that one run at the end that got him into field goal range? Obviously, attack on the, uh, the late hit out of bounds, which I feel bad for that kid, by the way. He was very emotional at the game. I feel terrible for him because uh, he knows the mistake he made and it just, it just sucks for him. Well, what about the holding there? Name the times that they call holding in tight playoff games with 15 seconds left. I mean, it's as if Bengals fans forgot that Sky Moore returned a punt 24 yards with 30 seconds left. It's as if Bengals fans forgot that Joe Burrow had the ball in his hands twice in the fourth quarter with a chance to take the lead. What did Joe Burrow do? Six plays ended in a pick. Next, the next drive, which ended up being his final of the game, seven plays, punt. 
You're a superstar quarterback, and God knows he is a superstar, which Joe Burrow is. Did not make the plays when his team needed them. Kansas City did. Mahomes did. The most talented quarterback we have ever seen in the history of the National Football League did on one freaking leg. Yeah, they can say whatever they want after this game. Who day? They going home, as Chris Jones said after the game. I'm telling you, I, I, one day I'll do a show, maybe this offseason, when there's not a whole lot to talk about in sports, because we all know there's that dead period, like in between the Super Bowl and March Madness. I'll do a segment on my show, like my five biggest pet peeves in sports. I can already tell you ahead of time what one of them is going to be. Fans blaming refs after close playoff losses. It drives me nuts. I mean, Kansas City got bad calls. They won the game. Ref didn't cost you, Cincinnati. Your quarterback did. Your quarterback's the reason that you lost the game. And their quarterback is the reason you lost the game. Because we are seeing the next all-time pantheon great quarterback. If Mahomes continues to do this, ladies and gentlemen, who's to say he won't be the greatest player ever? Will he need seven like Tom Brady? I don't, I don't think he's going to get seven. I think he'll get three, maybe four. I don't think he's going to get seven like Tom did. But a lot of folks say my, uh, LeBron James is the greatest ever. And he only has four rings to Jordan six. And Jordan doesn't even have the most rings. That's Bill Russell. Bill Russell has almost double the rings that Michael Jordan has. There's nuance when it comes to these greatest of all time arguments. Am I saying Mahomes is in it now? No, I am not saying that. He's five years in. We got a long way to go. But what he's done in those first five years, if he keeps doing this, that's an otherworldly talent we saw on that field yesterday. As I said on this show verbatim, going into the playoffs, it's Mahomes' world. We are all just living in it. And I said last week, there are two quarterbacks in the world that can care, that can care regardless of what you put around them, that can carry your teams. They both played on the field in, Arrow, field in Arrowhead Stadium last night. Joe Burrow had a beat-up offensive line. Patrick Mahomes was thrown to accountants on the field. Every other quarterback, every other quarterback, you have to put a darn near perfect roster around them to win. Simple as that. I'm about to get into Philly and San Francisco because that's kind of the situation in Philly with all due respect to Jalen Hurts, by the way, who's you know playing really well. But every quarter, I don't care who it is, whether it's Lawrence, Allen, Lamar Jackson, um, uh, uh, Dak Prescott, doesn't matter who it is. Derek Carr, you have to put a perfect roster around him. Matt Stafford last year, perfect roster around him. Because no quarterbacks in the world, outside of those two that we saw last night at Arrowhead Stadium, can carry you, regardless of what's around them. And what Mahomes did last night, folks, was one of the greatest things I've ever seen an NFL quarterback do. That was, that was inspiring. It was. I'm not even a Chiefs fan. That was insane.